the ball on the right side, facing down the world champions. Kickoff at the Aviva Stadium is next. Everyone is competing with something, and that's okay. Competition is a good thing. Not the kind that makes us bitter, the kind that makes us better. So we're proud to support Connacht, Leinster, Munster, and Ulster Rugby. While most folks share for one, we support all four provinces. Because we live and work in all four. And around here, competition is a good friend. It fuels us, connects us, pushes us past whatever stands in our way. And when we fall on the pitch or off it, it picks us up and reminds us, once you begin, you must never stop competing. So let's take a look at the two teams. It's an Ireland side showing four changes from that historic third test in Wellington five months ago. But Andy Farrell is naming the same pack. Caleb Doris at eight. Bird and Ryan reunited in the second row behind that all Leinster front row of Porter, Sheehan and Furlong. In the back line, it's a landmark day for Conor Murray, the eighth man to play 100 times for Ireland. Gary Ringrose also back, but the absence of both Henshaw and Lowe has opened the door for two Ulster men. It's Stuart McCloskey at centre and Robert Balakun on the wing in every sense this will be the biggest test of their careers three changes to the South African side but like their host their pack is unchanged led by Sia Khaleesi anchored by that monstrous World Cup winning second row fair of Etzebet and Diaga with Malcolm Marks holding off Manambi and Hooker there are three switches behind the scrum Damien Williams starts a test match at 10 for just the third time currently Aronson back in the wing Colby selected at fullback for the first time in test rugby Looking at the benches, O'Brien's promotion from the A squad could see him make his debut later this evening. It's a stacked Springboks bench, five of which played in the World Cup final three years ago. So we are almost ready to go. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, may not quite be appropriate for what we're going to see over the next couple of hours, but they haven't got to grips with each other over the last five years. Our match referee, Nika Amashakeli, alongside with the afternoon, Alan Quinlan and CJ Stander, two former Irish back row forwards. What are you hoping or expecting to see over the next couple of hours, Alan? Well, obviously, from an Irish point of view, we're hoping for an Irish win, but it's uh, it's going to be physical, it's going to be a real challenge and a test. Oh, you please. Uh, for the last two seasons, uh, the, the Springboks have been so consistent, they bring so much power and pace. And CJ, you've been out there against them, that physicality, how do you cope with it? Yeah, I think this is probably the first one we're going to see in, the, in this lineup. Uh, I think honestly, we're going to get the ball out quickly, but there's going to be a physical matchup and uh, one we're all excited for. Quick ball for Cutter Murray to work with straight into Sexton. Oh, looking for a quick start. Oh, the ball over the top, and that has fallen nicely for Gary Ringroads, facing South Africa for the first time in his Advantage test career. Referee has his arm out, Ireland playing with an advantage. Advantage is offside as well. And it's slow ball for Conor Murray. The referee will bring play back. But a positive start for Ireland and an early opportunity for them to hit the front. Yeah, it was a positive start. I think Number good line up win and Ireland and hit it up the middle then. And uh, Conor Murray went to try and get that box kick. It was half blocked down a little bit. And, you know, Gary Ringrose, absolutely brilliant there. Peter Steph to Toy just gets that timing wrong. Ringrose has his eyes on the ball, kind of weathers the storm then. And the South African player is not rolling away. It's a great opportunity. You'd imagine Johnny Sexton will kick this and it'll be a, a really good start for Ireland. Sexton facing the South Africans for the sixth time. Looking to add to the 66 points he's already amassed against the Springboks. And as settling kicks go in absolutely perfect kicking conditions, this doesn't get much easier. Well, barely two minutes in the clock. Ireland wanted a quick start. They've got one, Alan. First point of the game. Penalty for Ireland, scored by number 10. Jonathan yeah, they have. They've got one. Uh, it'll, it'll, it's exactly what you want to try and do, is build the scoreboard against South Africa. But I think they were a little bit fortunate there with the deflection. Ringrose did really well, as I said, and it was an easy kick for Sexton. So here is Damien Willemse 
It's the third time he's won the 10 jersey from the start for South Africa. No Andre Pollard. Their last test match was against Argentina in the Rugby yeah. Championship. Francois stayed. Was at fly half that day. On the first one. So they don't have a world-class goal kicker in their team, but they've got plenty of threat out wide. Yeah, that was a good kick from kick off from Phillips as well. Diego called it on himself and takes it well. Advantage. Penalty advantage for the Springboks. Hendrickson. Inside it goes to De Allende. Normally of the Munster Parish. Flair on. He's made some good ground, De Allende. Hendrickson. Nice pick up off his bootlaces by Malcolm Marks. And an early carry for Visa. Willemsen. Colby with his first opportunity to get the ball in hand. Ireland know how quickly he can do damage. They got to him very smartly indeed. Yeah, it's a really important oh, tackle from Gary Ringwells. I know they're going back going for the back penalty. But. You just want to take away that momentum. You know how dangerous he is, CJ Colby, when he gets the ball in those wide positions. And interestingly, and not surprisingly, from that first mall, they get a penalty. Collapsing the lift, yeah, I think uh, Peter and did actually very well there right. to get that down to the ground. But Five I think uh, if you look at the, the breakdown for Springboks, they're giving no opportunities for uh, the Irish no, back to get in there. And uh, Colby on the wing there, I think, uh, yeah, that's why they went on top of him. They know he's dangerous. Phillips has pointed to the corner. Yeah, this is what you don't want, is it? And here's the line-up win by the Jaeger. Yeah, I think it's... Maybe it's James Ryan that kind of fell over him a little bit, but this is a brilliant opportunity. Ireland have got to be really aggressive here and not allow them to get set. Easier said than done, but this is one of their big strengths, South Africa. Marco Max oh. fires it inside to Exeter. Well, Paul O'Connell earlier that we talked about how important the support was in the stands of the Viva Stadium to the Irish players and the supporters here are doing everything they can to get behind them now. It's an electric atmosphere. South Africa coming down the short side through Marks. And a carry from Steph to Toi. The toy rather and is taken up now by Malerbe. And now Luke Diaga. The toy again. Met by a two-man tackle involving McCluskey and Sexton. No, you got a ball there. You got a ball. You got a ball on your player. Diego. South Africa begin the process of softening up opposing defenders. Exhibit with another carry. Hendrickson. No, it's a bad Skips to toy. Goes to Willemsen. Attritional, intense, huge physicality already. Hitch off involved that time. Hendrickson. Back at the go to Visa. To Toy. Tackle by McCloskey. Hendrickson. Little shorter ball to Malerbe. Stout defence from Ireland. Scrabbling for an extra few feet was Jesse Creel. Khaleesi. To Toy for Willemsen. Look to spin out of the attempted tackle from Sexton. And they're within five metres now, the world champions. Willemsen. Well, he was hoping to fight a Springbok outside. He just about did in the end. Eventually, Kurt Lee Anderson got there. But Ireland had straight offside earlier in that passage of play, and it's another South African penalty. Just a penalty, nothing serious, yeah, fine. <laughs> right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Captain! Is the one for offside there? One for tackling the air? He's there in the middle. In the middle, yeah. So it's one offside and tackling the air. Well, two different penalties, in the and unsurprisingly, Sir right. Khaleesi opts to go to that closer to the post and it should be an easy opportunity for Damon Willem to, to yeah. bring the sides level. Uh, absolutely, he'd go back in and I think line, um, 
It's incredible pressure from South Africa. Great defence from Ireland. Oh, I think they're tight for and I'm going to feel a little bit hard done by. He got his hands in. The ball popped out at the side. He wasn't rewarded for it. But I think that's a big boost for, for Ireland there to hold South Africa out. Peter Steff to Toy going through the middle. It's this one here. Now it was McCluskey actually. It was McCluskey. I think he's very unlucky there not to be rewarded for that. But they were offside. They crept up a little bit there. And they had two penalties. Mack Hansen is kind of lucky he pulled out of that. But to give away the three points instead of maybe seven there. And that's what South Africa do so well. You could see him lining up in little pockets there running onto the ball and the Irish defence was very aggressive and it needs to be for 80 minutes. Well, like Sexton before him. An easy opportunity first up for Willemse. <laughs> who has had his good days with the kick and team, nailed a kick to help him beat the Wallabies in July of this year. But he doesn't kick regularly with his club and that will set the heels there as if there were any in the first place. So, Level pegging, just under nine minutes in. CJ, your early thoughts? I'm very impressed already with the Irish uh, mole defence there. I think it's Paul O'Call written all over it. Um, you can see Tyke there and Sheenan blocking those corners, not giving him anything, and that led into the good defence set there. The 27th time these nations have met. South Africa have dominated the rivalry traditionally with 18 wins, just seven for Ireland, but six of those wins have come in the last 10 meetings. No road for that's a bit to gain any yards. Yeah, I tell you, it's a big impact tackle from no, uh, no, from no, Doris five, there. Five, five, it's a bit, such a big hey, man. He was out. getting up ahead that's of steam, but, but Doris don't, don't met him yeah. right in the midriff there. It was a great tackle. Oh. They blocked him from Sheehan, and Hansen went for it. Couldn't quite beat David Delende to it. Ireland looking to force that's him right. into touch. Release, though, right, release. Hendrickson, Diego. That ball dropped, possibly went backwards. backwards. That's how the referee the saw it and his assistant on this near side. Wait, wait. Well, having failed with his first one, Hendricks might go to the skies again. And well, that's a tester now. Keenan is coming a long way to try and get there. It just seemed to no hang ball. in the air. And we came off a springbok hand. Balakun is hammered by Jesse Creel. Here's McCloskey. Oh, it's brilliant from McCloskey, isn't it? Great strength there. Well, he was right there to help his club mate. He was in a little bit of difficulty beneath that dropping ball. It falls for Sexton. Neat interplay between himself and Doris. And Sheehan retrieves it. Game being played at an incredible tempo. Tyg Byrne with a little show and go. Say Don't do the leg. Conor Murray looking to send up a bomb of his own. McCanson leading the chase, and it's a really good take from Willemsen. Hendrickson. That's for Visa with the carry. In fact, it goes for Colby. Say South Africa. Great height on this one again, and it's. Initially lost, but no, retaken. It's coming to that sign. It's one of them from Hugo Keenan, who has played absolutely no rugby since that third test against the All Blacks in Wellington. Sexton no, under pressure, breaks for Balakur. We'll hope to use Just his athleticism at no, certain stages away. of this game. It's a third no, try taken in right? So we go back for it. It's it. pretty frank, frantic, isn't it? Um, Hugo Keenan initially did well, absolutely he brilliant. He took it beyond the breakdown, so he can't, so we go for first. Come advantage. As you can see, every breakdown is a meal. I think everyone is going, oh, battle is going to be won and lost. I think you've got to be on the money as well, don't you? Time is off. As regards the counter-rock every time, because that is one of their big strengths, CJ. You've got to, is, it, is it about enthusiasm or, or technique getting there early? You know all about a breakdown, um, you I think it's uh, just you want to be in there and you want to make it a miss. Uh, There's technique for sure, but willingness to get in there and fight hard. Well, we've had to wait just 12 minutes or so for the first scrub. So much talk in the build-up about this South African front row. The bomb squad boat on and off the field. 
We'll see them empty their bench in the final quarter. And the call. No calling the tackle. They're up against Furlong, Sheehan and Porter. Well, Ireland have had to do an awful lot more work on the ground than South Africa, as you could see there. Nearly 50 tackles already. South Africa have had the ball for the most part. It's a lot of tackles, isn't it? Um, it takes its toll on you as well, but you know, South Africa are being smart. They're, they're playing in Ireland's half. And obviously we haven't seen a lot of attacking flair, but we've seen serious intensity and intent and aggression from both sides. How will the Irish front row stand up to this South African scrum? Both front rows have come down. The Georgian referee wants it played, which will suit Ireland just fine. Sexton puts a bit of width on it. It'll find its way to Hansen. Brought down at the end by Dale Ende. Murray under all sorts of pressure from Visa. And it came off the Munster scrum house hand. Yeah, it's big pressure again at the breakdown, and he just gets isolated, doesn't he? Hanson there, and nobody protecting Murray. And Ireland have got to be Almost careful gone. there. Uh, you've got to applaud their ambition going across the field, and if they can get some of that, those passes away, there was a lot of space out in the edge here. But, yeah, but you, you down, the risk up, is right? then, you know, Hanson is going back here. If he gets that pass away, Keenan's on the outside. There's a tackle there from yeah. Dialenda. He gets back he in his feet. Nobody supporting there. A risky one because he tackles high deal end of there. But a little bit isolated. Ireland have just got to be careful. What a big year. That's where Visa said. Three seasons at Welford Road. A big part of their push to the Premiership title last season. And he's backing down here at number eight. Along with the captain, Khaleesi, and the toy in that back row. Free kick South Africa. Hendricks are wasting no time. Good tackle, though. Watching his man all the way was Conor Murray. Good shot. Not on the ball. It's your home. Stay on. Stay on. Well, there, well, Ireland's defence has been rock solid so far. But Klosky sensing a steal, and they did get right in over that ball. Really good work between Doris and McCluskey. Oh, yeah. That's a big moment to we get towards the end of the opening quarter of an hour. Yeah, and you can see the reaction from the Irish players. McCluskey coming into this side. You know, no Bundyaki, no Robbie Henshaw. He is, this is a great opportunity for him to have a big game today and a significant boost there, oh, right, right. CJ, to win a turnover like that. It Doctor, gives please. A, the Irish team, somebody's got blood here, I think it. It's Tyke it, Byrne, is it? It is Tyke Byrne. Yes, please. Well, it's been a yes, rip-roaring start. The water, and it's now. just the start, so we've got a brilliant month of rugby continuing next week here in Virgin Media 2. Park of Kiev, Thursday night. Munster taking on a South African Select 15 for what should be a brilliant occasion. Join us from half six for that one. The next Saturday, we're back here at the Aviva Stadium, the earlier time of midday. Ireland taking on Fiji, and then to wrap up the Autumn Nation series for Andy Farrell's men, they're hosting the Wallabies in a fortnight's time. So much to look forward to. I've got an awful long way to go here in match one at the Aviva. Yeah, you can see from the pictures there was Caelan Doris and... And McCluskey there putting that pressure. Uh, you mentioned Jasper Visa a minute ago. He has that uh, CJ Stander leg drive and power. And that was brilliant defence there from Ireland again. But as I said in a minute ago, you've got to keep doing that, CJ. They're going to keep coming at Ireland all the time. One outrunners, two outrunners, just pumping the legs. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's probably as we saw in the start of the game. Um, Stuart McCloskey bringing in that big punch of Kaelin. Um, that just breaks the team um, a little bit. And that's the breakdowns we need. Um, they really put them on the pressure there. And it's good to see that uh, Stu has actually started very okay, well. Some good please. carries, big leg drive and a few very good turnovers. As you said, I think he was unlucky with the first one, uh, but that was an impressive one. Well, perhaps both sets of players You're right. will welcome this little break as Ty Byrne gets himself tidied up. I mean, Ireland do obviously want to keep the ball in play as much as possible, play this high-octane game, but this has been a ferocious start. It has, yeah, and they're the ones kind of absorbing a fair bit there. They haven't had a really any foothold in the, in the South African half, and that's probably the key in the next 
you know, a couple of minutes. There's only 15 minutes gone. It's to try and find some territory, get up, up the field because, you know, South Africa invariably, if you if you they want to keep you pressed back in your own half and they force mistakes and. You know, maybe Ireland will get rewarded with a little bit, a bit of space in the edge, but it's it's a little bit risky because their rush defence is so aggressive, and that comes from Nienemar. Uh, you know, his mentality is get off the line incredibly quick. Um, so I think the key for Ireland in the next 10, 15 minutes is try and find some territory and manage the the flow of the game a little bit. I understand. Well, no, I understand. I understand. We'll see where Diago picked up that injury. Just fell awkwardly with Sexton on top of him. Line back on. Oh, he's on. had some treatment and seems fine. His third appearance against Ireland, he's been beaten in the previous two games in which he's faced them. So now Sexton, now 36 years of age, finds a good touch. Uh, so can Ireland get themselves a little bit of territory here? On the line, South Africa on the line, on the line. It's okay. Sheehan goes to the tail where Byrne was waiting. Murray for Sexton, a brilliant offload. And now Keenan in a little bit of space. The pass just a bit too high for Hansen. But Jonathan Sexton took that right to the line. Lifting the leg. And Ireland have a penalty advantage. Then a number in Doris. Sexton for Ring Rose. Passing channel was occupied, so he was wise in keeping it. Sexton. Oh, man, he's out on that wing, and he's taken it well. Good tackle on him by Mapimbi. They'll come back for the penalty. I think they may look at his tackle here, yeah. Cheslin Colby. Could find himself in a bit of trouble. It's definitely a penalty, but they're going to look at this. And I think he lifts the legs in the air. Four play. Initially advantage. Or? Yeah, actions of 15 and seven. Right. Coming to the screen now. We've been looking about Cheslin Colby and the open side to Toy. And Hansen. Now was he tipped in that tackle? Well, there's no question he was. And there could be a bit of trouble for these boys here. The TMO this afternoon, Stuart. Terrix from England. Okay. Doesn't look good there. Yeah, I think so I see. There's a, there's initial one more angle coming, right. guys. One more angle coming. It's so needless. Determine that which guy initially, which player initially lifts the uh, Irish player, please. So I, I'd like you to look, I'd like you to focus on the actions of 15. I believe he's the primary lifter. Okay. So 15 has got a ball down to wrapped around him, so initially now he lifts him and drives over it. You agree, Stu? Maybe. All right. So, Stu? Doesn't look yes, good, does it? So I have a number 15 yeah, who is think, initially um, lifting a player card, yeah. above the horizontal. Um, we spoke about this and before the player the on uh, his back. So he's not a big dynamic thing, resist, but still there, but dangerous two players from on the yellow card. I would agree, the player is able to roll out. Yeah. It's, not, it's a dynamic, it's not a dynamic, sorry, but it's still a dangerous, it's above the horizontal. Right, so I'm mean, yelling. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's a yellow card. Yes. Yeah. Right, 15. Well, the card it is, and it's a yellow card. Alan, it was going to be a card of some colour. Has he picked the right one? I, I think he has. I think there's no force in the drive by Colby. So it's a um, lift in action, and the player goes on the on the back. And, it's and, not a dynamic and Mac Hansen right, can yeah. kind of put his hand out a little bit. Could, could have went the other way, but I think it's probably the right call. Yellow is the right call. Red, red would have been very harsh there, CJ, but... He's got to be careful there. When you lift a player's leg, it's uh, it's very, very dangerous, and you're putting Stand yourself in that position of potentially getting That's sent it. off. But I think yellow is the right call. Yeah, I think it's a, we're going we're gonna to see a call anyway. I think it's a very difficult one again when two players go in. Uh, you don't almost know who's, uh, who's to blame, but um, yeah, yellow. Uh, it's going to be a big difference in the game now for next 10.
We saw Matthew Reynal putting his twopence worth in there. CJ, you've got previous with him, I believe. I do. I had uh, a very good uh, weekend down in Cape Town in 2016, so I still love the, the dream. Yeah, the, uh, the, the colour of the card was of a slightly different hue on that occasion. What a nightmare, I should say. So the first real attacking platform Ireland have had in the South African 22. That man is gone for 10 Ireland, minutes. Come on. Peter Steph to Soy might feel a little bit fortunate they're, they're, that he wasn't following him. They're both lucky. You know, why do that? You're putting yourself in that position. I think there'll be a, a sense of relief from the South African coaches that the card wasn't different. Short and line out from Ireland. Oh man, he's the option. Off the top from Murray and now McCloskey. Hansen, if they could keep it going through the hands, there was an opening. But that was a hugely important tackle from Mbimbi. And South Africa have forced the penalty as well. That was a try-saving piece of defence for Makazali Mapimpi. Yeah, outstanding from him. He gets his time and right, and he's so good at that, Mapimpi. The, the thing is, if you don't get the time and right there and Ireland get the pass away, it's try time. But I think the ball is in the air too long. Great execution at the line-out. Brilliant line. You can see the South Africans just flying up. Jesse Creel there. If you all do it together, which they did there, it's so effective and uh, it's a brilliant tackle. Did he take him in the air? No, he got one, one foot down. Uh, brilliant timing from him and a, and a really, really important turnover. Ireland in that 22. Opportunity missed, but South Africa can thank that man for an incredible tackle there. The short winger. He knew it was all or nothing as he went in for Keaton there. And it's not just the tackle, Dave. It's the reaction of the other players around him to get over and counter up. Also bring South Africa back into the Irish half of the field as they just look to manage the clock during this 10-minute spell without Cheslin Colby. Malcolm Marks, the 28-year-old, one of several in this South African squad playing his club Hello. rugby in Japan at the moment. Hands up, eight, hands up, hands up! Yeah, South Africa, Jasper Visa out in the centres at the moment. Yeah, this won't be going so wide, it'll be direct from Tialinde. I think I have to uh, get the breakdown secured there um, to run down Johnny's channel and to make sure they get the ball back. Great work for Ireland on the ground. McCloskey involved again. He's had a big first quarter, Stuart McCloskey. He would have been running in the 12 channel and training all week, knowing there was potentially an issue with Robbie Enshaw. He got the nod yesterday. Just outside that man, Jonathan Sexton. Ten. All right. So it's a penalty against a neck grab now. Well, that's been reversed, and it's going to be a penalty for South Africa for a high tackle. Penalty around the neck. The TMO Stuart Terridge got involved. Jonathan Sexton, the culprit. It's hard to see it there, but... Um, Soft cold now. That arm around what he's penalised for there, the arm around Damien Dialenda's head, and, of course, you cannot do that. So what turned out to be a big kind of boost and reaction from Ireland, you could see from the Irish players, Willems has a chance to put South Africa ahead. Plenty of South African support in the stands this afternoon. And they'll be hoping that man can put them in front for the first time in this game. And you can see his overall success right from the tee. Nowhere near the level required at Test Match Rugby. But he's still just 24. Major Stormer's debut as an 18-year-old. He's taken his time to begin realising his potential, but he brings so much more in that fly-half position than the likes of Stain or Pollard. But that's where he lacks at the moment, and it could be an issue as the months tick on towards a World Cup for the reigning world champions. Oh, he never got that right, did he? Such a talented three, player. South Africa, they're three. trying to bring him through. Jacques Nienenbar, but an opportunity lost there. Sexton's restart towards Balakun. Collected by McCluskey. Van der Fleer, first time we've seen him carry. And he's been isolated here. A huge counter ruck from the South Africans. That is devastating work from them. Hendrickson wants to tap and go. And he hasn't taken it from the right spot. 
Well, there's the dangers of allowing a ball carrier to become that isolated. South Africa pounce with such speed. Uh, it was Malcolm Marks Malcolm as well. He's Marks. so they powerful. He initially drives Irish players off that ball. And it's immense pressure. It's just continuous pressure there at that breakdown. You switch off for uh, any moment finish. or any lapse, and they're going to the corner this time. But incredible counter rock from, from South Africa there, and uh, it was a big turnover. Well, as luck so often has it, you miss a kick, your next opportunity is from virtually the same spot. Yeah. This is how the penalty arrived. And Phillips, so what he was told initially by his captain, there was no chance of going to the post. They have gone to the corner and some more defending for Ireland to do. 14 man South Africa playing all of the rugby at the moment. Oh. One in the air by Etzebeth. The Irish defensive ball doing its job. Hendrickson, kitch up, latched onto by Khaleesi, and a Fleer and Sexton holding their progress. Detoy, <laughs> penalty Island. No, oh, it's a big moment, isn't it? South Africans just going off their feet, latching on and, and sinking straight to the ground there. It looked like they were getting a bit of momentum, South Africa there, getting over the gain line. Kits off, pumped the legs forward there. And then that carry around the corner from the toy. South Africans just gone off their feet. Gives Ireland a chance just to get a little breather here. They've been under the pump a little bit. Very direct approach. You can see it, Luthi Jaeger. Yeah, he goes straight down, sealing off the ball. Well, that was the reaction in the Irish coaching booth. Double jobbing this week. I like to Paul O'Connell and Simon Easterby under their head coach, Andy Farrell, helping the A-side prepare for their Good game job. at New Zealand last night. Pretty even on penalties conceded. South Africa averaged about 11 penalties a game conceded in the Rugby Championship. That's an untidy set piece from Ireland. And here comes Diego, tackled by McCloskey. Willemse. Oh, South Africa in front. A bit more time for Keenan this time. He runs it back with purpose. Furlock. So often the playmaker in that position, but takes it up himself this time. Back for Hold Sexton. On. Off goes Balakun. Underneath it was McPimby. Balakun almost knocked it back on the Ireland side. Referee has called that a knock on, which may have been a bit harsh. But a pretty good view of it from our commentary position. Nine, you got a ball. No, 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 no. The advantage will be over momentarily. Hendrickson down towards Balakun. Excellently taken from him. That's a great take from Balakun, isn't it? Under so much pressure there. There's Furlong with those soft hands. Keenan now. Ireland finding some space as Byrne goes to Hansen. Hansen was just knocked off a stride after he delivered that kick. And he has still managed to find his man in Jesse Creel. Raucous atmosphere to the Aviva again. Furlong's tackle on Diego, but there's an offside against Ireland. Yeah, it was Doris in midfield. Hendricks, Hendricks has just shimmied a little bit. Well, it's a stop by Sheehan. Delende. Ryan on top of him. Hendricks. Etzebeth. Advantage over. It's kids up. Tackle now, tackle. Oh, you got a ball. <laughs> well, that's worked out pretty nicely for Ireland. Penalty advantage for the Springboks. And just seconds after that advantage ceased, they've got in over the ball again. Yeah, they'd be disappointed, South Africa, that that, that advantage didn't last a little bit longer. Colby's coming back on now as well. But uh, oh, Ireland nearly getting the space out there with Mack Hansen. You just think 
what was probably needed was a little grubber along the ground rather than he, he had a big wind up back in field loads of space in the backfield but that execution I think Ireland are just that tiny tiny bit away from getting that clean line break there seems to be space it's incredibly hard to get it out there because that midfield defence is so aggressive but it's better from Ireland and they're scrambling there That's uh, I think it was Dan Sheehan there got that turnover I think we'll probably see some success on that uh, wide attacking channel from Ireland later in the game. I think the Springboks are still on top of the of, of the game. Uh, you're, you're, Quinny, I think you're on top of it. I think it's lit, lit, we're talking about splits of a, of a second of that ball going a bit quicker or a bit more accuracy, and they'll they'll get that break. And I think they let it, you know Jack Nienenbauer have identified you know what Ireland did in, in in New Zealand as well. CJ, the way they hold on to the ball, their the accuracy with those little wraparound passes. And they're putting so much pressure and so much emphasis to get off the line. As you say, the interesting thing will, can they keep doing that for 80 minutes? But, you know, they're a dangerous side themselves. This is where Stuart yeah. picked up his injury and he's in an awful lot of pain over there. And this doesn't look good. Jimmy O'Brien is stripped and ready to go, about to make his international debut. Well, if this is the end, of the game for McCloskey, how disappointing it is for him. He's waited so long for an opportunity to test himself in Ireland's best team against one of the best teams in the world. Yeah, it's his shoulder as well, I think. It's heartbreaking for him, you know, and he was doing so well. And he's a significant loss because of his physicality and size. Particularly in that midfield with Robbie Henshaw gone, Bundyaki gone, and now... Stuart McCluskey off the field. 12, Stuart McCluskey. No luck. They're really delving into their midfield resources at this stage, Ireland. No stress behind the sideways. That is a, a sad sight indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It brings so much bulk and power to that Irish midfield, particularly in the absence of Bundyaki. Yeah, Jimmy O'Brien now is going to outside centre. Gary Ringrose is going to go into 12. So just kind of change. You still have that elusive attacking Jimmy O'Brien, a really good player, a good stepper, but it's just that bit of physicality against Dialende and Jesse Creel. Well, his versatility has him as a key man Boy. at Leinster these days, and he's showing it again here. Plays so much of his rugby on the wing, but here he is in the international arena for the first time, and he's in Ireland's midfield. Murray. Balakou, that's a reach for that one, but he held on well. Sheehan ducks under that tackle from Hetzabet and up and under from Murray. Balakou looking to get after it. Good positional play from Willemse. Good feet as well from the 10. Balakou eventually makes his tackle. No, no, no. It was a little no, no, deep, wasn't it, ball. that kick from Conor Murray? Counter walk was fine. Idea was right. is certainly taking his time here. Yep. That's not his best kick either. Murray. Keenan. Looking for that little half gap. Stopped by Diego. No, no, no. Now on Mahoney. Murray for Ryan. Sexton sweeps one out to Balakin. He wisely withdrew from it, knowing that it was potentially going to end up in a knock-on, which ultimately it has done anyway. Yeah, it's risky. I think he uses the ball to try and fend off a South African player. Just loses the ball. I think Colby is over talking to the assistant referee on the far side. Let's see it again. There was space what there. Was this? was out last time. What goal is this? It's a shame it didn't go to hand. I think it's. Make sure you stay straight now, yeah? That's what he's saying. That he uses the arm, but the, the arm is in by the no, body. It. There's nothing wrong with to propel it's forward. Far, far off, it? It's it's risky when you kind of use that forearm a little bit, but he's holding the ball there in his hand. Yeah, it's a risky one. I think when you uh, he's, he's, he's lucky to get the close to the to the chest. Um, I think Johnny, you can see, he wants someone to get onto that ball, and that's the difference. I think someone needs to start running onto that ball and that wide edges and uh, take that space. 
Well, as you can see there, South Africa playing Something pretty much all of the out. rugby in this first half now. Foot. Certainly getting Boy. over that gain line with regularity in comparison to their hosts. Set. So they have to, of course, back up to their full complement. Was that last four by Visa? The referee's assistant on that far side was right on the spot. Penalty for Ireland, however. Matthew Reynal was all over that. Yes. That's just a mistake from Visa, isn't it? He's not happy. Good scrum. I thought the South Africans were going to go for a second drive. Let's see it again. He just gets tangled here, loses the ball. Yeah, it goes forward. Murray comes around then, and O'Mahony locks onto the ball, and they get rewarded with the penalty. Uh, so close to the touchline. No, the Irish coaching staff react to it. Not much of an angle for Sexton to work with. And he's really only picked up about 10 metres or so, if that. The man is the latest Irish centurion in Conor Murray. And the fourth monster man to do so as well. Come on, Ireland. No hard rule. Come on. No hard rule. And everyone can just draw a breath again. Ken Ireland slowly making their way to the line out. It was tipped by Byrne, just about getting at the Irish side, and Ringrose tries to wriggle away from that tackle from Willemset. Yeah, that's two in a row in the line outs now that have you know, one over the back, and that one was pretty messy. Jimmy O'Brien's first touch in Test Match Rugby. Doris finds Furlong, rather shoveled it in the direction of the Wexford man. Sexton held well by Peter O'Mahony. Burt puffed it short for Porter. Ireland really struggling to get over that gain line now. So to the skies they go. Hansen looking for it. Kitsop was very quick out of the blocks on that one. Willem, sir. South Africa stay. Oh, brilliant block down by Sheehan. Chance here for Dan Sheehan. Sheehan for Ireland. Has he got it down? He certainly believes so. I'm not so sure. Oh, it's a great block from Sheehan. He's so quick. Jesse Creel gets back shoulder to shoulder with him. He thinks he has it, but we'll wait and see in the picture. I think the ball could have been up in the air. Let's have a look. Okay, he just... We don't know what's happened, all right? We we'll just take one us. So I don't think the referee's made a decision either way here. Well, a man who's been a brilliant try scoring for him this season. Six tries in five games for Leinster, and he certainly hasn't got one here. Clear knock on. He isn't rewarded for that brilliant piece of endeavour. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the second time, isn't it? He, he tips it forward, and it's the second one. Would have been fortuitous, obviously, but um, Sheehan is brilliant. So quick. No He's got really so much pace to his game. Well, he was trying to pull the wall over all our eyes, Dan Sheehan, with the manner in which he celebrated afterwards. He must have known in his own heart of hearts that was never going to count. You have to celebrate, don't you? <laughs> Try anyway, take a chance. But look, sometimes you see... You see players in those situations when you go to the TMO. It was a terrible kick, wasn't it, from Willem? So way too low. Sheehan didn't have to do much there, just be in that position. I thought he was going to pick it up. The one thing I must say about Sheehan, he's been going at that uh, box kick and at uh, Willem the whole mo uh, afternoon so far, you know. So I think that's pressure and that's he's got rewarded it. He's like an extra wing forward, isn't he? He's so dynamic around the field. A disappointment for them. And what a test match this is. South Africa looking to atone for that record defeat here five years ago. And they turned the ship around very effectively indeed, winning a World Cup under two years later. So just under 10 minutes remaining in this first half. Ireland looking to join England, Wales, New Zealand and Australia in the sides of the beat South Africa over the last year. What a break is done. How can Ireland take on this South African scrum so close to their own try line? Hi, back on. 
Last car was better, gentlemen, because you worked hard there. Last car was better because you worked hard there on the stability. Make sure it continues, all right? Up, and you straight. Let's go. Yeah, just keep up. And so so it's very similar in terms of their experience. They both average about 28 caps a man. Both in very similar stages of their development. And of course, they will meet again at the World Cup in under a year's time. <laughs> Free kick, South Africa. leaning on the bind. It's a, a little bit harsh, that one, isn't all it? On just, we haven't seen numerous at all, so I just think it's a it's an early call there from him. Yeah, Venom's have found himself under a little bit of pressure there. Yeah, when it, when he moves, Hansen is quite entitled to run forward there. Uh, he was actually Andrew Porter. He uh, it was a Porter. A loose head prop chasing another player down there, a fly half down as well. But yeah, this is really crucial for Ireland now. I think the last two lineouts, as I said, one, you know, they were both just didn't get their timing right. Ryan to the front. Murray. Oh, lovely from Connor Murray. That's what we've seen from him down through the years. Not so much in recent seasons. Sheehan, that went backwards into his hands. Van der Fleer into play scrum half, finds Porter. He's looking to bulldoze his way through the tackle. Ireland's best spell, territorial at least. But repelled by that South African defence. Murray again, burned back inside for Doris. Ring rolls. A good carry from him. Porter first on the scene. Murray skipped Van der Fleer to find Ryan. Ireland oh, lacking width at the moment. They may keep it tight. They do in Porter. He's hit by Marks. Tackle! Burn. Nice footwork from him. There's Sexton. Jimmy O'Brien. Holds on to it, tackled no by advantage. Jesse Creel. No one tackled by number no three. No one tackled, penalty advantage for Ireland. Sexton now for Mac Hansen. Lovely soft hands, and Ryan has to go himself. <laughs> and they will come back for that penalty. No advantage. Going back for advantage. Yeah, I think it's against Franz yeah. Muller, but no arms in the tackle there. It's impressive from Ireland. You mentioned it, Dave, Gary Ringrose, an impressive carry. Well, tackle there by number three. The intelligence well, and the acceleration it. through the gap. They're making good decisions in that. It's so difficult because it's, they're so aggressive, the South Africans. What a break by Conor Murray. Superb. Goes to ground. They're trying to keep it alive quickly. This is the one from Ringrose. Maybe a little offload is on there, but it's a bit getting around trying to get at the breakdown and it's amazing it, it, even when you clean out one of the South Africans at the breakdown you've got to go again because they come back a second time that's the, the tackle from Malarba well, no arms tackle <laughs> that's the absolute definition of that from the tight head big blow for Ireland and losing McCloskey and a similar blow now for South Africa they've lost Le Diego the World Cup winning second row to what looks to be a similar injury so an early change to them, in comes Franco Muster. He came off the bench in the defeat here in 2017. He was off the bench in the World Cup final, and he's in from the reserve bench again here today. Yeah, it's heartbreaking for the Jaeger there, the same as McCluskey, and uh, you hate to see that in the game, and it's so unfortunate. And Ireland look to have lost Connor, Connor Murray as well. For Ireland, that sort of an opening half, in comes Jamison Gibson Park. Not how he wanted his 100 cap to end, Conor Murray. I'm not sure what happened here. Was it when he went to ground? Did he get the legs tangled a little bit there? But that's incredibly disappointing. But it's an incredibly physical game. A special day for Conor Murray winning his 100 cap. Looking to play in a fourth World Cup next year, Murray. He received a standing ovation while at the same time Jonathan Sexton put the ball between the posts. So, Ireland leads 6-3. Did he just pull up here on his way through? Yes, you can see it. The hamstring looks like it's gone. Or maybe a groin injury, and Conor Murray looks 
A disconsolate figure as he leaves the field. Doris claims the restart. Harlan with a slender first half lead. No, you're off your feet. Release. Well, the lead at half time is an important aspect of Ireland. Their last 13 times they've held the lead at half time, they've got on to win. Yeah, I think they'd be pleased, obviously, to be ahead. It's not as if South Africa had loads of chances, but they've had a lot of play down in Ireland's half, and, and they put a lot of pressure on there. You know, so Ireland have weathered that storm a little bit, gone up the field and, and gone ahead. And Murray's, a, a, you know, it's a, it's a tough one for Conor Murray. And a challenge for Gibson Parr coming on. He's well, he's played no rugby since uh, the summer. Early. Play advantage. And it's an advantage here for South Africa. Here's the toy. Yeah, it's true from South Africa. They hold the jumper up there, and uh, Ireland just engaged. Delende stabbing one through. Oh, what a pick up that is from Jesse Creel. Hendrickson. And they're slalowing their way through here, and Balakoon had to keep his nerve. They'll come all the way back to this near side for that line out penalty. But Robert Balakoon. When surrounded by Springboks, kept oh, calm. Yeah, and it's uh, the inevitable situation. They'll kick to the corner here again, and uh, right before half-time, psychologically, CJ, Six. big, big play coming up here. Unless he has a shot at goal, but I assume Early. they're going to kick to the corner. This is a big moment for Ireland with, you know, two and a half minutes left in the game, in the, in the first half. I think, yeah, exactly. I think they're going to go for the corner, yeah. Um, you know that advantage you have when you go in just before half time when you scored. So, uh, big uh, defensive set uh, being asked here of Ireland again. Um, uh, okay. Mall has been defended very, very well. Um, my big concern is um, I've seen Ireland on the wing here uh, lurking around for that cross kick. That's right. So, Phillips will head for the corner. Two minutes remaining. It just shows the type of game that we've had so far. Like Ireland have had one clean break, South Africa none. It's it's just it's a real attritional direct don't, don't come, game from both game. sides. Yeah, I think Ireland have probably shown a little bit more ambition to get wit in it, but they found that very difficult with that aggressive defence from South Africa. Big moment you feel here, Malcolm Marks with the line out throw. Ryan disrupts it brilliantly. Well, they need to get back out from behind their own try line, though. No, he's outside, no, Ty Furlong had to fight for every inch there. Well, it was brilliant from James oh, Ryan. I think he rock. just still got still up in, in front rock. of Etzebet. Cleared by Jimmy O'Brien. Ireland will have more defending to do, but they still told there. No, it's, uh, it's brilliant. They've got to do it again. You can see Ryan just gets the hand there. I think it's a bit, he probably, they showed their hand a little bit there. It just, it kind of seemed to go through, he's come off. It's, it's, a, off. Yeah, injury. Injury. it's a bit hand that maybe he knocked it on. It should be a knock on there from it's a bit. Yeah, that was missed by the referee and his assistant. And had it been spotted, Tyke Furlong may have not had to go through what he did. And it looks like he's picked up an injury now. Just 40 minutes of rugby for Tyke Furlong since that third test in New Zealand. Chance for the Irish to regroup. What's this? Talk their way through what may occur over the next minute or so. Finley Bealum getting himself prepped if required. Well, there was a nod of the head there from Furlong, which might suggest he's happy to continue. Ireland carried it over their own line and had to fight their way back out. Furlong, with a little bit of help from Van der Fleer, did just that. Oh, it's fine. And he's down again. That left ankle is a problem. Yeah, they're going to strap it up. He's going to stay on the field, Furlong. The last thing they need to do is, uh, you know, to lose him now at this stage. He's so important to this side. Incredibly talented player, but an incredibly physical player as well. Such an impact tackler, and his work rate is through the roof. And he's a... Uh, 
he's certainly in the corner of that team. You know, he's a guy that's very physical, carries well, and uh, Manza stands up in the scrum. I tell you, if the score, if South Africa score off this one or this fast of the play, 20 minutes left before half time. Andy Farrell won't be too pleased because Etzebeth did knock that on in the line-out and it was missed by the officials. Find the call. Another opportunity for Marks. Didn't find his mark the last time he does, this time in the form of Detoy. Khaleesi barges over the top of Van der Fleer. In with Darren to play scrum half. Release four. South Africa threatening now. Visa. Advantage offside. Penalty advantage for the world champions. Ireland straying okay. offside as Willemsen flings it towards De Allende. He's held up on the tackle by O'Mahony. Going back for advantage. Well, do they take the points here? Yeah, I'd imagine they should do. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Only, no, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. Well, you'll have heard some pretty colourful language there. Picked up by our pitch side microphones. Temper spraying as we get towards half time. It's here offside, is it? Okay. Let me deal with it. Uh, oh, shot called. Well, they are calling a shot at goal. The like the rock shifted. As James Ryan adjusted. now gets some treatment. The medical staff have been overworked in this first half. Well, interestingly, a pretty simple kick right in front of the post, and it's not Damien Willems with the tee in his hand. Another, if you could call him, a part-time kicker in Cheslin Colby. Himself and wearing an unfamiliar jersey today with 15 for the first time in a test match. I was really cool. I was meant to go take a picture and I was like, it's not going to play. <laughs> He's never kicked a goal for South Africa. But this will be the final kick of a very draining first half for these players. Through it goes. Nothing to separate them. The world's number right side and the world champions have gone toe to toe for over 40 minutes and they are level. Half time at the Evita Stadium. It's Ireland 6, South Africa 6. Meanwhile, at the Aviva Stadium, we are six points apiece, second half about to get underway. Desperately disappointing for Conor Murray. He was having a very good game as well on his 100th test appearance and, uh, well, an ovation earlier than he wanted. We're about to go second half. I think we saw Finley Bealham there. So, uh, bench is all important here, Matt. Yeah, the, uh, Ireland can win this, but they've got to maintain their scrum and line out. They've got to maintain their set play. OK, back to you, Dave. Yes, thanks, guys. Well, more bad news for Ireland at halftime. Ty Furlong hasn't been able to retake his place on the field. So a switch in the front row. In comes Finlay Bealham, who has been on the field for some of Ireland's now best moments over the last couple of years. He is tried and tested at this level, but he's got a big test ahead of him over the next 40 minutes or so. Both sets of teams have... And players have lost guys to injury in that first half. Lud Dieger gone for South Africa. McCluskey, Murray, and Bealham, or and Furlong rather, absent for Ireland. No hands. There's Willem. He did have a knock just before half time, which meant Colby took that kick, which brought the sides level. Marks. Don't do that. Rickson, back for Colby. Stay South Africa. There'll be snow on this one when it hits the ground. Hansen just got a little bit of a nudge and it was knocked on by a <laughs> South African hand. Yeah, it's that type of game, and uh, it, particularly in the first half. It's really hard to find any space and uh, Colby going to the air there again. Steph the toy usually holds on to those ones, but you said it, Dave. Tyke Furlong going off. Uh, that's a big blow. <laughs> you know, they already lost. 
couple of good scrums. Kloski well. and Murray as well. So three big players gone Sanders off the field yeah. for Ireland. Stay straight now. Elbow up. Stay with you now. Stay straight, please. And it's going to be telling, but it's going to be a test for the players who've come on and the depth of this squad. So they've got to adapt and cope. It's a big, big half of rugby for Finlay Bealham. This is his first scrum. He's got to get it right here. Kitsoff is a powerful scrummager. Well, Andy Farrell spoke during the week about this being a, somewhat of a mini World Cup, his series of games, and there would be ups and downs and issues with injuries and personnel. This is when you want the likes of Finlay Bealham to really get his opportunity 11 months out from a World Cup and not be thrown into it in a potential quarter final at some stage in France. Yeah, he's right at the cold face here, and that scrum there was creeping around there. On with Kitsoff, the referee thought it was OK, but I think Kitsoff is coming right out with his hips there. You can see the angle there overhead. He's just kind of running around there and it's so right in front of the referee. Sure straight, right? He's saying it's a good it's contest. Tough. It's not straight scrummage, and no. But they're going to target him. It's exactly what the message will be coming on from Rassi Erasmus now and so Nina awesome. Barr go after the tight head side of that scrum. And we know how effective South Africa are at this. But I think Kitsov has got to be straight here. And Bela will likely have Vincent Cock to deal with then later in the second <laughs> half. And that's a good start for the Connacht yeah. tight head. A real confidence booster. That man not out there at the moment. But he'll be hoping that Finley Bela acquits himself well for the remainder of this game. Yeah, he gets uh, gets the break there, right in front of the ref. Maybe he felt that he should have <laughs> rewarded him for the last one, but Bielham is trying to go very low. Kitsoff looked a bit bemused there. We probably have to see it again. Could have been a bit of a harsh one there. Let's look at it again. It's right in front of the ref. Well, they both kind of go down, don't they? Both hinge in there. Hold the gun. Line out has malfunctioned a couple of times, but just the Hold one the gap. Yes, line out lost to South Africa. Sheehan all the way to the beyond the tail, in fact, to Omahani section that looked forward to Mac Hansen. Recycled by Jimmy O'Brien, and he's forced a couple of South Africans to fall off their tackle. Sexton has yet to get back to his feet and looks to be in a lot of pain on the 10 meter line. Ireland attacking without their fly half. Hansen, Gibson Park for O'Mahony. Keenan, Ring Rose, Gibson Park. Oh, that's brilliant to Hansen. Gibson Park looking sharp despite having played no oh, rugby this season. Hansen now, again at first receiver. It's a wonderful ball out to O'Mahony. Takes two to put him down. Ring rose for Porter. Sexton still receiving treatment out of picture. Ring rose again. Gibson Park looking to and work that short side. Offside called oh, against Franz Malerbe, who had no intention of getting out of that area. There is Sexton the still being tended to. Yeah, the crowd wanted more there from Alherba, and Gibson Park was right to pass there. There was a little bit of space on the blind side, but that's a lot of work for Ireland there. Good defence, you'd have to say, from South Africa. This is a lovely little ball on the inside. He nearly gets away. It's a bit makes a tackle with Mostert. Marantz gets good and low, stops that momentum from O'Mahony there. Ring Rose here again. He's just so good at that and does short little channels. You could argue that that could be a little bit more. It's Jesse Creel there with the tackle. I don't think there's, I think it was lower. There's nothing wrong with the tackle, but it's a worry when you see Sexton going down. And it's, it's incredibly physical this game. So, uh, but credit to Ireland, they're actually taking the game. They're starting really well in the second half. 
Well, certainly no sign, CJ, of the intensity dropping in this opening five minutes of the second period. Yeah, you can see it there, with, uh, especially with James and Gibson Park coming on the pitch. I think he's actually testing that, uh, that fringes now from the breakdown. I think South Africa is going hard at the breakdown, so it leaves him vulnerable. That's a good spot from him. And that tackle on Johnny was, uh, was quite intense. And I think the next 20 minutes again, we're going to see some physical battle. I, I think the key for Ireland, CJ, is to try and get the multi-phase, which, you know, they're getting to five, six, seven phases. But he's going to the corner. The crowd are loving this, but... It's it's a massive opportunity now, and can Ireland execute here? Here we go. I think this is what they were looking for. Um, yes, again, they need to just get the forwards around the corner and try to get those faces going and uh, get the wingers in there. Well, we mentioned the test will keep coming for Finlay Beal and, and the rest of that Irish front row. Malherbe, having conceded two penalties, he's been withdrawn. And in comes the former Saracens front rower. Vincent Cock, a man who lost his job at Was just a, three months after leaving Saracens. He's now headed for Stade Francais. One in the air by O'Mahony. So that we're going to force him into touch. And really well defended by the Springboks. The referee wants to have a closer look at it though. Josh van der Fleer thinks he got there, whether there was feet in touch beforehand. An incredible dynamic drive in at the angle from the South Africans. They got done really quick. He has a grounding. Getting go forward from that uh, front ball is quite difficult. That's well done from Ireland and uh, Josh from the field. When the player grounds the ball, it's not in touch or not? We'll have a look. Yes, understood. Okay. Well, under a huge amount of pressure, Van der Fleer, as he came around that corner. Well, there's no issue with the grounding. Question is, was there any part of Van der Fleer in touch? And he grounds it. We're just trying to see where his feet are. Well, all around him were losing their heads. Josh van der Fleer kept his. I think those legs belong to van der Fleer, and they are well inside that touchline. Yeah, he's, this, this should be a try. Josh van der Fleer goes down on one knee, and he's not in touch. You can see him just dropping there now. His feet are well from the touch. Yes, we're looking That's... to see where his feet are. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit complicated. You need to give me a bit more time. Right, yeah. Take your time now because the journalist looks the same. So take your time now to determine where the foot is. Well, the this rest. is the angle that should give us a better yeah. idea. And he's wearing the headgear. Well, there is Van der Fleer. Both of those Mika, legs yes, are in. I have a decision for you. Okay. The player is not in touch and he grabs that the is ball. a the superb finish from Josh Van der Fleer. His seventh try in his last 13 tests. And it's a massive moment early in the second half. A ninth international try for the Leinster Open side. Well, for all the world, CJ, South Africa looked to have been sending Ireland well over that touchline, but Van der Fleer had other ideas. That's some uh, presence of mind to be in the game there and see where the line is. Um, just look at the forwards here. Yeah, you can see um, Peter Romani, Kellen Doris, Sheenan actually pushing back in. They're outside of the pitch, smart enough to get the players back in. They were still working off the pitch. And the uh, South Africans are coming around the corner quite hard, trying to shift that front ball. Josh Van der Fleer, well done. That is unbelievable presence of mind to make sure you get that ball done and get outside. A very pleased bunch there as well. What a star of this team. He's become the reigning European Player of the Year, the Irish Players Player of the Year. But the individual accolades are one thing. He wants to be on the winning side here today. Well, history would tell us Sexton has a less than one and two chance of nailing this from this position. They opted to go for the corner, and they've reaped the rewards for that already. This would be a bonus. Not to be, but a five-point lead is as much as either of these sides have enjoyed at any stage in this game. 
there's some pressure coming on from the South Africans there, and it just spins around. I think Visa was probably one of the ones running around the corner there, but as you say, CJ van der Fleer did brilliantly there to get that ball down. Here's Doris. Sense that the momentum was with Ireland at the moment. That left boot option of Jimmy O'Brien, where James Lowe has had such a good time of it with Ireland over the last couple of years. It's a great option to have. Here's Willemse back inside to Etzebeth. I tell you, Finley Beelham made a great tackle on Colby there. It's not easy when he's running up just stepping. Henry step back to Colby. Keenan comes, calls and claims. Beelham inside for Ryan. Ball is there. Go back. Jefferson Park has pointed to the skies. Damien Willemsen well, yes. will likely be the target here. Off goes Balakun. Willemsen kept his composure and is met by Balakun and Ringroads. Ball is out for Doris and he somehow kept this alive. Ryan, Porter for Beelham. And off goes Gibson Park. Burn, there's numbers here for Ireland. Keenan. Jimmy O'Brien from Matt Hansen! Fabulous rugby from Ireland! And the number one ranked side in the world have come to play in this second half. Oh, what a bit of magic from J Gibson Park. Finds that space in the field, big field. But I tell you what, Hugo Keenan there. What a take in the air. And it all, all that try has come from that brilliant continuity from Ireland in midfield. That's Keenan here, the determination. The pimpy's so good. He takes the hit from the Khal Khaleesi as well. And then Ringrose counter attack, ball shoots out. Brilliant from Doris before he's in touch. And then watch the reaction here. You have that shooter out of the way. Porter gets through, gets that little tip on pass. I tell you, Gibson Parks timing a pass there. Great finish then. What a try from Ireland, what a reaction, two tries in a couple of minutes, superb. There's so much that was good about that try, from the feeling in the air, CJ, to the presence of mind from Doris on the touchline, and also the awareness from Gibson Park to see that he was up against Kitsoff in midfield, a real mismatch there. Those are the team tries we love to see from Ireland, uh, everyone was involved, someone has had an unbelievable impact so far with a small few touches, Finley Beelham, good scrum, good tackle as we said on Colby, and just that small offload, he came into this game and he's, he's growing. So a second international try for Mac Hansen, the other against the French in Paris this year. And now Sexton. Tyke Byrne had a lovely little tip on in the midfield as well, didn't he? It's a cleaner strike this time, but just tails away to the left. But the Irish lead is 10. Nine and eight. So rough at the Ireland, 16. South Africa. South Africa now, that is the trigger for them to start emptying their bench as we look at that glorious ball inside from Doris. And Jimmy O'Brien on his international debut just kept his head and put Hansen in for an easy finish. Faf de Klerk is on at half-back for South Africa. Dion Fury also in as well, the 36-year-old Stormers forward. He's having a, an Indian summer to his career. Yeah, and Jimmy Bryan has played well, hasn't he, since he's come on. He's given him that left foot option there. Oh, Doris again taking the kick off, making the hard yards, taking, you know, big South hits Africa, off the South Africans two, there. Clark, Ireland have found their flow a little bit here now. And they've got to, they can't switch off. They're 10 points ahead. It's not a big scoreline. You know, Quagga Smith has come on for the South Africans. He put more pressure at that breakdown, and of course, Faf de Clark, very abrasive player as well. Advantage Ireland, South Africa about to bring in the former Wasp fullback, Willie LaRue. Sexton just sized up his options, Keenan stepping inside. Balakun would have been away if he could have just got his hands free. No, 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 he's passing on the way. Feel him. Oh, that was a 
is a risky one. And South Africa have turned that ball over to Clerk, to Toy, Willemsen, Jesse Creel. That looked forward to Khaleesi, and it was. I tell you, watch the, watch the tackle from Hugo Keenan here, the pressure. Jesse Creel has a look up, says, I'm going to take on this Irish player, but Keenan just takes the legs. He's had a big, big second half so far, Hugo Keenan. This is the timing of the pass. Steph to the tight there is hunting Sexton down. He's put a lot of pressure on Johnny Sexton all day. They get the ball back. South Africa, CJ, are getting a little bit sloppy. Is it down to Ireland's? accuracy or is it just they're fatiguing a little bit who knows yeah i think we'll probably see a, a change when they bring some more players off the bench South africa but i think again it's uh, about the physicality in the start of the game i think that's they're just fatiguing now and uh, we'll probably see a few changes coming in line up ball in a forward pass there yeah well they've got to get the scrum right again we saw the two previous ones one that went down the two of them went down second one a penalty finley bielham has got to get this one right here he needs a mahani scrummage and hard on him as well well, they've made six of their eight changes already, Seven. South Africa. Hold. Just Hold. the two front row forwards and Oxenche and Bongi and Bonambi still to come in. <laughs> Another penalty for Ireland. And the fears over the absence of Furlong in this yeah. second half have been allayed by Finley Bealham and the rest of that Irish Well, pack. I tell Porter, Porter had Vincent Sorry, Cock under a lot of pressure up. there. He crabbed across a little bit, but then Ireland got that momentum going forward. That's... A little bit surprised with the, the force that Ireland got forward there, but they get the penalty, and, uh, and again, they're winning those moments in the second half, and, uh, you know, obviously they've got those two tries. Let's see it again. It's Yeah, I think Porter just cleans Vincent Cock out there. It's very unlike him, and you can see Ireland get that last little surge there and deservedly get the penalty. Very impressive. You said it. There's no furlong in there. Yeah, the whole scrum going back into Lassie, but he needs to be straight enough. And Bielham can be very proud of his efforts so far, but a long way to go. Another great oh. take in the air by O'Mahony. Okay. And lost four. We're still strong. Yeah, We're they were strong, nearly so. going forward too quick, weren't they, there? But I tell you, that's... That, What's the break now? That's some, that's some throw from uh, Dan Sheehan right to O'Mahony at the very top of the jump. There's two South African pods going up behind him and in front of him, so it was a risky one, but he got it right. Well, this is just day one of a feast of rugby over the next few weeks here in Virgin Media 2. Join us Thursday night. Bucky Keeve is the venue monster taking on a South African Select 15. That should be a great evening. Join us from half six for that. Next Saturday, we're back here in Dublin. The earlier time of midday for Ireland, Fiji. And then to wrap up the Autumn Nation series, it will be Ireland hosting Australia in a fortnight's time. Well, what a way to kick things off it would be if they were to take down the world champions. Now that Mac Hansen try has Ireland in a very promising position. Well, a much needed break at the ball with the two sets of pairs taking on some liquid CJ. What has the change been for you in this first 15 minutes of the second period? Um, I just saw that try there with Mac Hansen. and players are running onto that ball in that space. I think uh, the ball is being put in front of him, um, and that's all working against the South African defence. Um, you can see my Pimpy and him coming in, almost hitting the 13 channel, and the ball is going a bit wider. And uh, again, I just think uh, South Africa is fatiguing at the moment. Um, you can see in the, the, the few sloppy balls they've lost, and Ireland is just growing and growing and growing. And I think the bench has done very well when they came on big impact. Well, we can see from the graphic there the rock speed, and that's probably been the key for the second half it's been quicker for Ireland they meet Gibson Park has been able to move the ball away a little bit quicker and it's it's probably stopped that really aggressive defensive line it slows it down a little bit it makes him check we saw um, you know them shooting out of the line and it just com completely fractured there for that try from Mac Hansen but Ireland's execution very impressive there Peelham against Kitsoff. Peelham should be the fresher of the two. Kitsoff starting to look pretty fatigued. Stay up, good job. Good job, stay up. And move the ball, please. Take it up by Dion Forey. <laughs> now, Vincent Cock. Line, use it, please. 
They're primed and ready to chase. Here comes Balakert. Lost forward. To Clerk for Willemse. Poor pass. Well, Ireland were hoping to hear advantage over. Oh, South Africa ball took ball. that ball away yeah, from the rock. Springboks a little fortunate there. Yeah, a little bit, but they, they knew they had the knock-on advantage, so he took a risk there. This is a lottery, isn't it? It's it's hard for Balakun there. I think gets a bit gets a hand to that, so I'm not sure if it was a knock-on. It's very, it's easy for us to say when you see the replay, but it's a bit of a lottery that kick. Let's let's see if this hand get in here. No, oh, well, Balakun touched it as well, so it was a knock-on. I just think uh, the smartest there, you can see Porter and uh, James Ryan running back, not touching that ball. That's a penalty all there, they do when they've left it. So the Springboks uh, get their scrum. I think it's a big defensive set coming up again. Changes. One and two, South Africa is off. And here come the final couple of changes for the Springboks. Bongi and Bonambi comes in for his 53rd appearance. And Oxenche, another powerful Oxenche, ball carrier. He comes in for Marks in the front row. Yeah, it's a lot of power in Che and Umbanambi, but I, I tell you, Ireland have done really well to stop Malcolm Marks. He usually gets two, three, four turnovers a game, and he hasn't got any today. He had one big moment, of course, in the first half. But they've done a real good job in stopping him. But that's a lot of power coming off the bench. It's, it's fresh legs as well, and uh, you know they have those six forwards on, on oh. that in that pack now for this second half. And uh, let's see, can they make a difference? Well, and they've earned the penalty. Yeah, it's an immediate impact from Oxenche. Tight head coming up. Finley Beelham there just stood up out of that scrum. But it's incredible pressure coming through. Phillips a fine touch. Not the best of kicks, though. What's the pressure there? Yeah, Finley Beelham just popped straight up out of it. I think Okniche was told there to keep up the shoulder, and he actually popped uh, uh, Beelham, you know, so I think it helped a lot for the picture for the ref. And Bonami's first line out throw. Man, he was forced off so early in that World Cup final. After just 22 minutes. Whoa. Plenty of deception in that South African line. Ambalambi has it. In comes to Clerk to play it. You feel the next score has to come from South Africa if they're to turn this around. The Porter making a real nuisance of himself, as is Sheehan. They never change their bye, and they have done that. So effectively. Ah, it's a brilliant collective effort from them. You know, they looked in control there, South Africa. All the Irish forwards, Porter, Omani right in the thick of it, James Ryan. Hold on. That's the unseen work that wins your matches like this. You know, Porter's hanging on to two or three guys there. Look at the aggression of Omani and Bealham coming in there. Yes, Makes a huge difference there. James Ryan, Sheehan in there as well. They're big moments. Far loves that. Any coach would love that. That is how a pack uh, backs himself up from a penalty scrum and come back and uh, get a scrum to show what they're worth. Well done from that. Yeah, well, they've got it. The problem they have now is uh, they've got to get this scrum right. And South Africa and Enche. The replacement, Lou said, is going to go at Finley Bealham again. He's got to get really low here. Boy! Set! So, brand new South African front row. Well, Arley get their own back. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a definite penalty, Dave, because they're, they're just crabbing straight across the field to try and turn the scum around. It's completely illegal, and... Uh, they didn't fool the referee there. I think you will see another shot of it overhead, and it's just completely spinning around. And again, it's a, it's an important psychological win for Ireland. They've taken, you know, the last scrum. Obviously, uh, South Africa got a penalty for it. They put it down the line. Ireland defend them all. They turn it over. And now they have a chance to to go upfield again. They don't get into the South African half, but it's a big scrum, isn't it? Watch the legs, the angle, they're going right across, even those second rows. It was all rather untidy.
You could argue, if you're a South African watching that, that Porter goes in a little bit in that angle as well, but it's difficult for, for him, and the team in possession got rewarded. And how quickly out of the blocks was Vincent Cock there. Showed a fleet of foot, the front row forward. Certainly the line-out will have to be looked at from Ireland heading into the games against Fiji and Australia. Not just quick off the mark, lovely hands as well from Cock, but they couldn't keep it in hand and knocked on at the end by Quagga Smith. Doris. Gibson Park with the kick, and he's got that all wrong. He may have to field his own kick. Knocked on. Smith just bounced off Dan Sheehan. That's a bet. No, listen. Into the final quarter of this pulsating test match now. LaRue, out it goes towards Jesse Creel. To Clerk, LaRue in it. First receiver, that's about with another carry. LaRue again, Willemsen. Lovely flat pass to fight Napimbi. Go ahead, it's not for really for Napimbi to go. Counter-rocket oh, counter for great effect. And a bit of a rush of blood to the head for Ty Bird, perhaps Gibson Park looking to turn. An average kick to do a good one with that chase. Colby. Burn does get his tackle in in the end. And check. LaRue for Creel. Walk backwards by Keenan. Ireland stay. Looking for a little pocket Ireland of space ball. between Willems and LaRue. Willemsen, a little goose step doesn't feel Sexton. De Clerc, De Toy. Well handled by Imbarambi. No hands now! <laughs> well done, Philip. And well, they're taking it quickly. Off goes Quagga Smith. Good tackle from Gibson Park. That was brave. LaRue. That's a back. Again, he's held. Jimmy O'Brien that time. And knocked forward by Willemsen. Stout defensive play from Ireland, who have put their own welfare to the side to take down some of the biggest men in world rugby. Yeah, it, it, it was a penalty coming there for Josh van der Fleer, and I think he's quite entitled to, to hit the arm there. And, and the ball went forward. Quagga Smith takes the quick, the quick penalty. He's very powerful. Gibson Park does brilliantly to take him down there. And you think they're going to score? What a tackle from Jimmy O'Brien. So much power coming through there. Oxen Che with the pass. And I think Willem said there, he sees and feels Balakoon right in front of him coming out of the line. We smoke, spoke about the Mapimpi tackle in the first half. That was as effective there, and it forced that knock on there. Ireland hanging on a little bit, and South Africa throwing everything at it. Yeah, I think as the second breath you spoke about, the Springboks are going to bring in this second off. Um, there was some unbelievable defence. Jameson putting his head down there. Quacha with the no step straight over. And um, I think um, you see, you're right. Balakun made sure he was in, in his face there, in Willems' face, and try saving tackle. Here, so, Seth to Toy has been withdrawn. It does look like they have brought in Dion Forey. There he is. Well into his mid 30s at this stage, when he could play in the back row two, and hooker. But they've had to bring back in Kirtley Aronson of South Africa for that blood injury to Makazoli Mapimpi. And Dan Sheehan after another huge shift that he's put in. And he's been replaced at hooker by Rob Herring, of course, South African born. And it's all happening out there, very difficult to keep track of exactly who's on and who's not. Time back on. On me, guys. On me. A lot of missed tackles by the South Africans. Over. Go on, no call. 
some of the pressure that Ireland have been putting on them. Ireland Court. Jameson Gibson Park has been tended to after that big tackle he put in on Quagga Smith. And they brought the scrum cap in for him as well. There is Aronson, who didn't see much of the ball when he was on before being withdrawn. Kieran Treadwell in a day before his 27th birthday comes on for Ty Byrne. He's had another big game for Ireland. From Ireland. Byrne gets a huge ovation. Such a consistent performer. Hold the pressure. Hold the pressure. Still plenty of time for the world champions to turn this around. Crutch. Fine. Set. A rather different looking Jameson Gibson Park with the put in. It was a clean strike from Rob Herring. His first contribution sent it flying back to Doris. And nine, use it. Gibson Park blocked down by Etzebet. It's a towering oh, figure to try and get past. Brilliantly done, though, by Josh van der Fleer. The tackle came in from Khaleesi. Advantage over. Philip for Treadwell, who's into the fray immediately. Now Ryan. Umbanambi gripping his right ankle with dear life. But South Africa forced Ireland into holding on. Play the ball. the ball. Release the ball. Holding on. Yeah, it was Dean Faree there this time. So good on the ground. And that's why they probably made those changes and it put him on the bench listen, listen. as well. No, no, listen. Watch your language now, all right? Watch your language, Mark is there. Billy LaRue uh, getting a little bit of a telling off. He's hot headed, isn't he, CJ? He well, he, fires up. I think he was speaking Afrikaans there for a while. So. He's a prickly character, Willie LaRue. That's a terrible kick from Bellamson. Easily taken by Balakun. They had concerns nice. over that man with the boot coming into this game, and they course. will not have been allayed in this match. Off goes Gibson Park again. Flung to the ground by Etzebet. Like a rag doll. Treadwell for Bielem. Now you got the ball, you have to use it. Back for Sexton. Kept alive by Willemsen. <laughs> that was Hugo Keane and Barry obviously pushing De Clare into the ball carrier. Release! LaRue, Delende, De Klerk for LaRue, slides one through for Colby, and he lays it out to his right, what a tackle from Hansen, Ireland's scramble defence comes up trumps again. South Africa looked for all the world like they were going over, they may still do. For it, opted to go tackle. along. High tackle, penalty advantage for South Africa. Delende for LaRue. And almost over was Master to the is in. The referee will want another look. Yes, sir. So I got an decision try. Because I think the player has grounded the ball. Just need to double check this. Okay, because we can, we will. Former Lions and Gloucester, second oh, row. So he's only Gloucester. scored a couple of tries in his test match career. Oh, and he's got that's pressure on that all right. Yeah. South Africa have come roaring back into this game. Yeah, and you've got to give South Africa credit. Their reaction has been incredibly energetic. The substitutions have made a difference. The pace and tempo that they've got in the last, you know, seven, eight minutes has been very impressive. And 
They could have scored over the far corner. Some great cover tackles. Lovely little kick through by Philly LaRue. Mac Hansen does brilliantly there, doesn't he? Colby nearly gets there. Jimmy O'Brien is stopping him. And they had a penalty coming. You know, Ireland hanging on here. They get across, make the tackle. They had a penalty coming, but that pass there. I think it's Kieran Treadwell just probably comes up out of that line there and gives that opportunity to Mostert. So it's sent to Cheslin Colby to make this a three-point game. Off the post. Another let off for Ireland for the kicking team. Ireland have made a couple of further changes. They've brought Keane Healy into the front row. His fifth appearance against South Africa, 13 years after his first. As we look at Mostert's expert finish, Jack Colan has replaced Peter O'Mahony in the back row. Jack Colan replacing number six, Peter O'Mahony. Zinevar and Erasmus happy with that one. What a difference the second half is. It's non-stop, isn't it? We haven't had loads of tries, two from Ireland, one from South Africa, but there's been so much tempo and pace to this second half. A lot more opportunities for players to run with the ball. We start collected by Mossert. Substitution for Ireland, number 17, Kiyaki. For Willemse, Replacing Vili LaRue. Taken on by Corey. Your hands now. Ireland need to play a bit of rugby in South African territory for a little while. Tackle release! South Africa has almost gone to that second uh, game plan of them having two attackers with Vili and Damien nice. both sides. I think that's what's putting Ireland under pressure. Philipsa and Lurie, the two players just mentioned. Now the hands of De Allende. Balakun shot out of the line and didn't make his tackle. Mostert. Tackled by Ryan. Counter rook from Ireland is good. Declared for Willemse. Hans and Akina left it for each other, but they have plenty of time to assess their options, which is to go skyward. Backwards. Backwards off the hands of Declare. Willemse looking for a 50-22, but he's overcooked it. And I'll get field position in South African territory. Yeah, that's a, a big Towards mistake me. from Willemse. I, I'm not sure that was the best kick up field. <laughs> yeah, water break, please. Ireland looking a little bit fatigued now. It's very difficult because the pace and the tempo has really increased. No, they're having to defend so manfully and kind of stay connected in defence because you know and this is a South African side that you know have the confidence and belief that they can go back they're five points behind we're on the 70th mark the well, Rob Guardian studio before the game CJ was saying that he felt Ireland needed five to seven point buffer heading into the closing stages they have that do you see them getting over the line from here yeah, that is, um, I think that's probably, that's going to help them out, especially with this line coming in. I think they need to get some points here, even if it's just three, just to uh, make that buffer just out of the reach from the spring box and uh, to give them some uh, some time to recoup. Yeah, make it a two-score game should be their objective from here. And the bruised and battered bodies of Furlong and McCloskey. McCloskey's evening cut very short. This event will surely still believe these spring bucks are made of stern stuff. Guys back on. Comes back on the Irish side. Sexton. Doris looking to lead the chase. They may have touched it, the Mayo man, but it hasn't been called. And Banambi shovels the ball somewhere towards LaRue. Now Willemse 
South Africa looking a little ragged. Hansen will want it back. They're Keenan on his shoulder. Gibson Park looks right and left. Gives it to Ryan. Keen Healy with his hand calling for it. Advantage offside. Colin, penalty coming for Ireland. Treadwell. Enough rolling to just play advantage Ireland. Sexton. Jimmy O'Brien looking at this one, LaRue. And they'll come back for that penalty. Well, it was a free play for Sexton. Perhaps CJ, if, if Balakun had been on the right wing, it might have been a fairer contest in the air. Yeah, that was a pinpoint kick, you know, I think uh, everyone, all of us kept us uh, up the breath there and might, <laughs> we almost thought it was going to happen, but uh, we got the penalty there. Um, now, corner, three points, there we go, big moment. It is, you feel, at any other stage of the game, this close to the touchline, they would have gone for the corner, but Ireland need to go in for the kill here. And give them yeah, that no, no, eight-point no, 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 buffer. Yes. Pushed tone of anxiety descends around the Aviva Stadium. A full house, and the vast majority will feel that yeah, this could be sure the hinge moment in this game. A man with over a thousand points in Test match rugby. Twenty-first time he started a test match as captain, looking to lead Ireland to a win over the world champions. This would go a long way towards achieving that. the scalp of the world champions and they will not be giving up without a proper scrap. They have six minutes to turn this around. Yeah. Etzebeth. Yeah. They'll need to score quickly, South Africa. Willemse, big hit for Mack Hansen. In the tackle, right? Willie LaRue felt that was a deliberate knock-on, but it's in the, tackle. the referee insisted it was part of the tackle. It's in the tackle. So it's an option for line out in the scrubs, South Africa. Option. Stop. Park to hide. Go back. Go back. Sure. There's there's a sure. Brilliant take in the air. Well, was that a fair call or was Mac Hansen a little fortunate? He's a little fortunate there, but I think he's trying yeah, to, yeah, Matthew, I'm okay. in that grab motion, and that's why he could probably gets away with it. It's just a penalty. Well, he's just seen the Clubs. replay on the big screen, and that's the reason for the little smirk Boy. that he had on his face a moment ago. He feels that he's maybe Set. dodged a bullet there as well, the Connacht winger. Advantage. South Africa with a penalty Great if required. Advantage. They do need two scores. De Klerk. Put down by Ringrose, who's had a quietly efficient afternoon in the 13 jersey. He spent most of the game playing at 12. De Klerk for Vincent Cock. And if South Africa do score, Ireland need to ensure they force them into taking as long as they possibly can in doing so. Colby. 
jinking and dancing, oh, looking for a space that isn't there. The clerk for Cup. Willie LaRue is taken down by Balakou. Now Etzebet. What a pass of Etzebet! That's fabulous rugby! Finished off by Curly Aronson. The tallest man on the field had the softest hands at the crucial time. Uh, absolute brilliance from uh, from Etzebet there. Aronson on the outside, but he, you think Balakou does brilliantly here to make this tackle. He gets his timing right. Just before this play, but that's brilliant, brilliant play from uh, Etzebet. He's such a tall man and a skillful player as well. Superb. Well, you wouldn't have put your money on Chesley Colby making that kick. The version goes wide. The score is Ireland 19, South Africa 16. That's the tackle on Billy LaRue. And in fairness, Billy LaRue did brilliantly. Oh, yeah. To get back up, keep keep the ball alive, I should say, and ah, that's super skills, isn't it? I think that's from very, very, very good skill from Eben. Uh, to get the ball away, there, there's not much you can do as a defender. You have to go at him, and Adams in the right spot. Well, Ireland, or South Africa, rather, will need to try to win this game. Substitution for Ireland. Joey Carberry has come in. So many times Sexton. over the years, he's come in for Sexton to help close out some of these biggest moments, going all the way back to the win over New Zealand in Chicago six years ago now. <laughs> what a servant to the Irish game that man has been. 77 minutes in, he's finally left the fray. Can Ireland hold out? Cleared by De Klerk, insisting it had touched an Irish hand on the way. No, 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 Lance, no, stop it, no touch. Yeah, two and a half minutes left, and it's uh, it's obviously a bit nerve-wracking. Only three points in it. Go. Go. Really important that Ireland win this this uh, this line out and build some phases here and try and see out the clock. It would be a brilliant win given all the injuries that they, they've had and the power and the aggression of the, of the South Africans. Ireland, well, nine-game run of home victory. 627 days since they were last beaten on home soil. <laughs> and that penalty will be of great assistance to making it 10 wins in a row. A South African boot coming through under the nose of the referee. Etzebet ran 50 metres to retrieve that ball to get play back up and running. Here it comes, there you go. Yeah, it's out of desperation, isn't it? Khaleesi's not happy, but it is a penalty. The crowd are loving it. It's a brilliant win for Ireland. I think you could say it's a win. CJ Stander is laughing at me here. It's not a banker yet, there's a minute and 20 seconds, but I'm saying it's a win. Obviously, they've got to execute this line out here. They didn't win it clean the last time, but... Uh, what an atmosphere, what a performance against... Under so much pressure. Rob Herring needs to find his man. Taking their time. Felix Jones screaming at Harry for taking so much time with the throw, which was an excellent one. Ring roads. Just a few more phases for Ireland. Gibson Park. Doris shunted backwards. No, away, away. Treadwell. Into the final 30 seconds. Desperate times for the world champions. Oh, yeah, clean out the players. Gibson Park for Treadwell again. Lost. Too big. Perhaps part. one more phase might do it. And the Fleer is poised and waiting. Towards Carberry, he must find the touchline, which he does. And have beat the world. Champions. They've justified their tag as the world's number one ranked nation. 
in a test match that had it all. An arm wrestle in the first half. But the touch paper was lit early in the second. Pushed all the way, as you would expect, by Shea Khaleesi and his players. Ireland have come out on top. And they have kicked off the autumn international sequence in style. Yeah, it's an incredible win, and credit to both sets of players. It was so intense throughout the game. Well, there were so many big performances, Alan. But player of the match was a, a decision that had to be made, a difficult one, I'm sure. Yeah, there were so many. Uh, it was a, so forward-oriented at times. I'm picking Josh van der Feer as player of the match, not just for his tackles and his energy around the field, but his ability to protect the ball when Ireland had it so many times. He's had an incredible year. Doris was brilliant as well. James Ryan, Hugo Keenan had so many big moments right after half-time. But it was, it was a brilliant performance from, from Doris. Uh, and Josh van der Fleer as well in the back row. Oh man, he was good, but Josh van der Fleer, he's my player of the match. So he is the Bank of Ireland player of the match on a day in which all of these Irish players stood up and were counted. An incredible win in the end. It went all the way, full time at the Aviva Stadium. It's finished Ireland 19, South Africa 16. Dave, Alan, CJ, thank you very much. An extraordinary Irish performance, an extraordinary win. Physical from start to finish. The Irish stood up to that challenge. The Irish bench stood up to the challenge as well. There were question marks aplenty coming into this game. Ireland have answered a lot of questions today. Yeah, they have. They've, they've, they've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe physically with the biggest team in the world, world champions. We haven't played South Africa in a number of years now, so we weren't quite sure how we would...